Give me a go, no go for launch. Kia ora te whanau, and welcome to Stuff to Watch, the podcast that takes the stress out of streaming. I'm James Crute, and in about 10 minutes, I'll help you plan your weekend viewing. Joining me this week are expert pundits, Bridget Jones. Hello. And Emily Brooks. Hello. Emily, what's been your show of the year so far? My show of the year would have to be Winning Time, about the Showtime era of the Lakers. I have no interest in basketball whatsoever, but the show is just remarkable, amazing performances. Loved it. What about you, Bridget? My new favourite show is one that Kiwi audiences haven't actually seen yet. It's called The Bear. I know Emily is as obsessed with the kitchen drama as I am. It's out, I think, later this month. Also soon to be released, League of Their Own, which is based on the movie. It's also very good. We'll definitely talk about both those in the coming weeks. Anyway, let's find some stuff that people can watch right now. We start with Paper Girls, out today on Prime Video. It's a time-travelling sci-fi extravaganza based on the comic book series of the same name. Bridget, I feel like we've covered a lot of shows about time travel this year. Yeah, once again, I've become the time-travelling correspondent and I don't know how this happened. I'm the least sci-fi person of all your guests, I'm pretty sure. But I watched all episodes of this new series in very quick succession, even though I'm not entirely sure I can tell you what it's about. But let me try. Early on the morning after Halloween in about 1988, four young paper girls are yanked away from their delivery routes and are caught up in a crossfire between warring time travellers. All sorts of weird and crazy, scary things happen from there. And there's, yes, a lot of time travel. You have no idea what's at stake here. Yeah, yeah, it's the fate of humanity. I get it. It's a great series. Some listeners, like you say, they might be familiar with the comic book that the series is based on, and the cast in this are really, really great. All of the lead actors are under 16, and they're all very, very talented, if a little advanced for what are meant to be a bunch of 12-year-olds. It's a really well-rounded series that is maybe for teens, maybe it's for adults, maybe it's for everyone. It's fun, it's scary, it's confusing, there's some good effects, there's some really like sweet moments, and is an extra bonus. The soundtrack is killer. Everything from Sheer to New Order to David Bowie to LCD Sound System. So it's a real winner. Emily, it's hard not to talk about this without mentioning Stranger Things. Do you think this is Prime Video's answer or is it really something completely different? I mean, it's Stranger Things meets Yellow Jackets meets 13 going on 30. Like there's so much going on in the show, but it is undeniably likeable. And I think girls need a show like this too. Like it's great to have this kind of like sci-fi sort of action-y series with girls squarely at the centre. I think it's great. I loved it as well. I think the chemistry between the four in particular is just wonderful. It's definitely got a kind of back to the future, particularly part two vibe about it as well. But I just love how they brought to life sort of the the paper round of post-Halloween 1988 and just all the little things around that, but then fast-forwarding it to the future and what would a child of Generation X make of uh, modern day? So next up, it's The Grey Man, out now on Netflix. It had a little cinema run even as well, so uh, invested in it were the flicks. If you're typing it into the search engine, remember it's the American spelling of grey with an A. This is a gigantic budget action thriller from the team behind some of Marvel's biggest hits, in particular Endgame and Civil War. Stars Ryan Gosling and Emily. It all looks a bit Jason Bourne. Very Jason Bourne, very Jack Reacher. This is a shoot 'em up action flick starring Ryan Gosling as a government trained assassin who we know only as Sierra Six, who comes into possession of information that would compromise CIA agent Carmichael. That's Rege Jean Page from uh, the first season of Bridgerton. He goes on the run, so Carmichael six another assassin called Lloyd Hansen on him. And things get more complicated when Hansen's guys kidnap the young niece of Six's mentor Fitzroy, played by Billy Bob Thornton, as leverage to get Fitzroy to give Six up. It sounds more complicated than it is. I mean, it's really just an action flick where Ryan Gosling runs around trying to save the girl, evade the bad guys, and not letting the information fall into the wrong hands. It's directed, as you say, James, by the Russo brothers. They know their way around a Marvel film, but I'm not so sure that they're as great at straight-up action. The Grey Man, I think, is at least three fight sequences is too long and the civilian body count gets really uncomfortably high. I know it's an action movie, but suspension of disbelief does get a little bit stretched as, you know, Ryan Gosling manages to kill dozens and dozens of highly trained operatives single-handedly without getting much more than a scratch on him. You're hurt. 
I mean, my ego's a little bruised. The highlight of the film, for sure, is Chris Evans playing Assassin Hansen as a sort of twisted psychopath delighting in all the carnage. There's a little bit of humour, but not a lot. I mean, what this really is, clearly, is Netflix's attempt to create its own big-budget franchise. You know, it has enjoyable moments. It has great fight sequences. It was $200 million to make. There's loads of great special effects, but I wouldn't say it's a great film. Bridget, how did you feel about Regis Jean Page playing essentially a bad guy? Look, good to see him do something after Bridget in. The, the guys earned it. But I have to say, I agree with pretty much everything Emily said. I've seen interviews with Ryan Gosling, who seems very proud with the fact that they have probably double the amount of action set pieces that a usual action fl- film would have. I think the film suffers for it. I think they look great, but the story just seems a little bit disjointed. Uh- it kind of reminded me of the early Gosling flicks, but with a little less style. So you think of Drive and you think of Only God Forgives, The Place Amongst the Pines, you know, this kind of inscrutable character who may be a good guy, maybe a bad guy, you're not quite sure. I thought Chris Evans had stolen Henry Cavill's moustache from uh, Mission Impossible, so bad it was. I don't know. It felt like a whole lot of ideas that they're just thrown against the wall. But yeah, it just didn't seem to offer that much that was new. Now, most Kiwi viewers probably know Mel and Sue as the hosts of The Great British Bake Off, but they started out as comic actors, and they're returning to their roots in Hitmen, a new series on Sky's Vibe channel. Bridget, you a fan of this? Yeah. (laughs) Short answer is yeah. Hillary and Jeremy, Mick and Keith, Mac and Cheese, they're all world-class double acts, but one of my favourites is Mel and Sue. They found each other at Cambridge, the uni, not the horse capital of New Zealand. In Hitmen, they're contract killers for hire and they are terrible at the job. You don't want to waste your precious birthday, Fran, waiting to, you know... I can hear everything. K-I-L-L him. Yeah, and I can spell. Each episode is hinged around a different contract handed out by their boss, the mysterious Mr K, and each episode has a handful of very wonderfully placed special guests. For example, in episode one, Nick Muhammad from Ted Lasso turns up as a man dressed as a spider. It's really funny, really sweet, quite ridiculous, and if you ignore the murdering, like a really lovely little friendship story. It was fun, except for all their murders. I was a little more on the fence with this. I think you have to like the particular style of humour that they're peddling here. The guest stars are definitely one of the great things about it. But I felt the shtick, particularly between Mel and Sue's characters, just felt a little forced and the characters were a little too dynamically wide. I mean, Sue's character is very much the cynic and Mel's character is just ditzy, quite frankly. But, you know, if you love these two and you love this kind of humour, then you will get a lot out of it. Right, new today on Apple TV is a psychological thriller called Surface. Now, we should note that this show is about the events leading up to a suicide attempt. Possibly. If that causes any distress, there are plenty of organisations which can help, including the 24-hour free 1737 helpline. Emily, Apple TV have been in a rich vein of form with Wild Horses, Severance and Blackbird all released recently. Is this another quality addition to their burgeoning catalogue? Not really. It's a bit of a paint-by-numbers psychological thriller, and I think it might have done a bit more for me if it wasn't the latest in a long line of female-led psychological thrillers to hit small screens in the last 12 to 18 months. Here we have British actress Gugu and Bartha Roar as Sophie, who at the start of the series is five months into recovery from a traumatic brain injury that wiped her memory. Do you know what it feels like to not remember anything? She sustained the injury by supposedly jumping from a boat in an attempt to kill herself. She's becoming less certain that that's the case. Uh, She has a seemingly loving and filthy rich husband and a supportive best friend. But, you know, as is the nature of these shows, whether they are who they say they are, whether they truly have her best interest at heart is in doubt. Then a little way into the first episode, a cop working on her case, or is he, turns up and the engine of the show really gets going. The characters don't matter. Every single thing that happens is in service of an increasingly twisty, absurd plot. And I really just think everything about the show is quite ordinary. In a sea of far superior similar shows, nothing just really stood out for me here. I think, sadly, you're probably right. It hardly seems a month goes by now without the British using some former Downton Abbey actress to be basically gaslit by another member of their family and suddenly realised they had another life. This week's classic cut is Apollo 13, which has just arrived on Neon. 
It's Ron Howard's brilliant 1995 take on the true story of the ill-fated moon landing, or attempted one anyway, by the spacecraft. Why they wanted to call it Apollo 13, I often wondered. Uh, Houston, we have a problem. It is brilliant. It is a bit blokey. It is very talky. It does feel like David Mamet might have scripted it, such as the great dialogue and the amazing cast that they sort of assembled. Tom Hanks is right at the top, but you've also got Kevin Bacon, Bill Paxton, Ed Harris, Catherine Quinlan. It just is wonderful in the time that it takes to set up the whole conundrum. It's kind of like a maths movie where where instead of just doing the drama, they show their inner workings and problem solving and not everything works. And, you know, I think they've stayed pretty true to the what actually happened. Obviously, there is some archival footage that they're able to draw on. But look, Apollo 13 is kind of the ultimate dad movie in a lot of ways. It's one of the greats of the 90s. And um, if you're after something that's absorbing, that's a true life drama, then you should definitely check it out. In my opinion, Apollo 13 is one of the greatest thriller films that was ever made. You know what the outcome's going to be, but you're still on the edge of your seat the entire time. Yeah, Houston, we have no problem with this film. I agree, this is Tom Hanks at his finest. I think this is also Ron Howard at his finest, doing everything that he does best. You know, it's got all of the suspense, it's got all of the drama, but it's also got all of the pathos and the real human characters, the kind of thing I would have liked to have seen a little bit more in either of the um, show and movie that I've reviewed this week, actually. I think one of its successes is it isn't overly sentimental, which it could have been. And I think if you tried to make it now, there would be too much digital technology. I think the fact that they had to be basically practical with most of their effects lends it the kind of old school quality. But anyway, let's remind you of what we talked about today. Paper Girls on Prime Video. The Grey Man on Netflix. Hit Men on Vibe. Surface, new this weekend on Apple TV+. Plus. And my classic cut, Apollo 13, now on Neon. That's all for this week. I'll be back next Friday. By the way, if you follow Stuff to Watch on Apple or Spotify, or any podcast app actually, you'll get each new episode delivered a few hours ahead of its official release. Go on, you know you want to. You'll find all the links at stuff.co.nz slash stuff to watch. Thanks to my guests, Bridget Jones. Catch you later. And Emily Brooks. Thanks, James. And to producer Chris Reed. I'm James Crute, and I've been finding you stuff to watch. <laughs>